Hi there. This is Frazia Nyasulu. I'm back. Uh, this time I want to talk about intermolecular forces. A really important uh, chapter in the field of chemistry. Um, in terms of uh, Chem 1520, you certainly talk a lot about intermolecular forces for pure phases, that is in chapter 12, and then also uh, quite a bit in chapter 13, and we'll kind of cover both. So intermolecular forces is a topic, and so here are our object objectives. Let's if I can pick up a pen here. giving me the pen options. All right, point options. All right, pen. Okay. So, so here's what we're going to do. We want to th um, uh, explain solubility. Certain things dissolve in other things and certain ones don't. Why is it? It turns out that um, a great deal of it has to do with uh, intermolecular forces. So, for a solution to form, we've got to think about intermolecular forces in the solute, intermolecular forces in the solvent, and think about the cross, the intermolecular forces between molecules of the solute and solvent, and see if uh, the cross is uh, significantly favorable. Hmm. And so in this case, uh, we'll be dealing with uh, various solvents, um, especially water and cyclohexane. Then we'll move on to capillarity. Your textbook, that is Silver Silverberg, has really an excellent description of capillarity. That is the rise of water in a small tube. What is it that pulls the water up? What is it that causes or gives us the concave, concave shape? So, spend some time with your, with your textbook, <laughs> and then now, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in our case, we we'll also explore the effect of soap. It turns out that soap kind of affects uh, affects these things. And then we'll think about surface tension, and this capillarity and surface tension are closely linked. Uh, what is surface tension? And again, there's a good, very good description in, in, in your textbook, and certainly explore that. I'm not going to kind of write a new version of that in the lab manual when all of you guys have your textbook. So uh, look at that, make sure you digest that, think about it. Maybe you've covered it in class as well. And so come with that, and then we'll explore how to measure surface tension, and then uh, think about things that affect surface tension. All right, so those are our objectives, my friends. So, uh, so we're going to be talking into molecular forces, and so, well, we know certain molecules are polar, certain ones are a polar and they have hydrogen bonding, certain ones are non-polar, they operate on dispersion forces, and all of that's like, mm, okay. Polarity. How do we describe it? Now, descriptions are good. This is more polar than that. It's like, mm. she's taller than him, he's taller than him, but how do these compare? Anyway, so, it's nice of units. And it turns out, uh, if, you if you look up here, uh, if we grow the dipole moment, you're familiar with this picture, HF, the dipole moment points that way. Then, you can describe polarity uh, if you were to quantify this charge here, quantify that delta charge there, and uh, do the distance in between those charges. Then, the polarity charges is a charge times the distance of separation between the charges. So, the units are coulombs for charge and meter. It turns out that for any individual molecules, you might guess the number is going to be extremely small. And so, here we go. Let's go. Dibai. Dibai. Define one. Dibai is this 10 to the minus 30 thing. And then you get reasonable numbers for, for um, the typical molecule. What a 1.85 Dubai. By the way, your textbook goes surprised it doesn't have, it doesn't mention the Dubai thing. So really, Dubai polarity. 
Dubai. Anyway, so moving along, uh, uh, and, and so he said only that's useful in terms of discussing intermolecular forces. But it turns out then, if we are going to measure intermolecular forces, forces in neutrons, it's kind of hard to do. Uh, so the concept is, if we have um, molecules in the liquid state, certainly if they are interacting in and holding on to each other, the energy required to separate them out completely must be related to the intermolecular force. So strangely enough, intermolecular forces is given in kilojoules per mole. It's like, really? Anyway. Eh, so, uh, in terms of vaporization, in terms of sublimation, uh, those certainly are important parameters relating to intermolecular forces of substances. Moving along, what's the other one? Surface tension. Aha! Surface tension. Eh, nice description in the text. How does it go? Well, it's the... Uh, if if um, if you have a droplet or something wrong like that, what's the amount of energy required to increase the surface area by one meter? So so the units are joules joules per meter squared. <laughs> some shape, some surface area. Can you increase it? How much energy is being spent to increase the surface area? Hmm. I think of a balloon, balloon, yeah, balloon, not a balloon, uh, like a bubble. If you try to increase the size, how much energy is needed to do that? Anyway, so joules per meter squared, which so happens to be also equal to newtons per meter. And I, joules per meter squared is equal to newtons per meter. And I like that because if I take this, <laughs> the round thing, surface tension is well i mean new, is if i put a rope around here sort of one dimensional rope and then i pull it and then it's i'm pulling it then i'm exerting a force that's going inside that's newtons per distance meter that'll be surface tension i like that because this is a surface so surface uh, tension <laughs> we're tensing it <laughs> surface tension ah Related to intermolecular forces. Nice description in the textbook where molecules are pulling each other on the surface, the ones inside are doing the same, and these ones are, are unfavorable because they're only pulling in sort of a, a half hemispherical here compared to the ones inside that are full. And so these kind of want to get in there, and so they're pushing inside overall, and so get surface tension. <laughs> Chemistry is good. And then, of course, boiling point where you're separating the molecules. And look at this, they don't always relate very nicely. The water, 1.85 Dubai, highest boiling point of these three, 2.91 acetone, lowest, like, ooh, what's happening here? But that's a story for another day. Let's move on. Hmm. So, in our case, we're going to focus on these three here. Uh, yeah, yeah, physical state, you know that. Uh, the, uh, the, if they're very weak intermolecular forces, then the, then the physical state of the substance is more likely to be gas and end up of vaporization. We talked about that. We're going to deal with these three here that are all kind of, at least the two are uh, closely related. And so let's explore those definitions. Ah, I already talked about this one. Energy, surface tension. Let's go. Gum, is it gamma? Yeah, I think so. That sign. <laughs> yeah, energy. In yeah, so anyway, this was talking about just per meter squared is equal to um, newtons per meter. Capillarity. We'll take a tube and put it in, small diameter tube, you put it in water, and we know the water rises, I don't know, <clears throat> like that. What's the nature of the glass here that allows the water to be pulled up against gravity? Uh, huh, against gravity? Anyway, um, uh, it turns out that, uh, uh, that uh, 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 this equation here relates uh, the surface tension to the parameters, measurable pan parameters described here. Our well, G is acceleration due to gravity. You guys will meet that in physics and whatever it is. This rho is a density. Ha! I can find the density of the solvent. 
SI units, kilograms per meters cubed, you can do that, you can go from here to there. Arrow is internal radius of this tube, internal smaller tube, I can measure that or determine that, and H is the capillary rise, so that's R, and well, R is half, <laughs> and this is H. <laughs> yeah. So if I determine those, if I could determine those, G is whatever it is, rho, density, R and H divided by 2, that's the surface tension. Hey, we can do that in the lab. Yeah, we can do that in our general chemistry lab. <laughs> so, uh, but in our case, we, we kind of say we're smarter than that, so we'll do it. So, we'll take water. Uh, this, the the, 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 the uh, surface tension for water is kind of well known and well measured, and here is the value at 22 degrees centigrade, and it will be close to 22 degrees centigrade when we do this lab. If we take a ratio of the two equations, the equation that I have before and the equation here, uh, certainly uh, the G and the other things carry out. So if the if I'm looking for the surface tension for pentanol, whatever this is, divide by that for water, all the other parameters except for rho and height, and uh, rho and height uh, remain, and uh, we can look up the density of water or determine the density of water pretty close to 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. And then we can just determine the, 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 the specific gravity of uh, of uh, uh, of uh, pentanol or whatever solvent we'll have and look up the density of water and using this calculation which by the way you did in 1510 be able to come up with uh, the, the the density in grams per, per, per centimeter or milliliter cubed multiply that uh, convert that to kilograms per meters cubed and then we have the density to use in the equation here we'll know three of this and can solve for the last for the unknown which is the surface tension for pentanol. But here's the important thing. Looking at pentanol, five carbons with an OH. In this case, an OH stuck to the middle carbon. What are your expectations? Thinking of water, its ability to hydrogen bond in a three-dimensional way, nothing getting in the way, kind of, and then pentanol, it's like five carbons with the middle one here. Well, what are your expectations for surface tension? going to be higher or it's going to be less. Trying to process these things and think about them, even ahead of the experiment, that's the scientists in you. And you've got to, you've got to grow the science attitude and the reasoning. There's no switch that happens when you, I don't know, when you grow up or whatever, or you get your degree, then it just happens. Anyway, moving right along. I talk too much, I'm sorry moving right along. Hey, hey, this came from your picture, representing intermolecular forces between uh, a solute and the solvent. And so, so here, sodium uh, plus in water here, look at what the water molecules, this is called hydration. Yeah, the point with the oxygen. And this is great. This is my labeling. This is a figure from your textbook. Um, methanol and, and water, it's like, oh yeah, that's equally great. And then there, you can look at the numbers here in terms of energies that go down. Uh, ethanol, ethanol, I guess I'll uh, Hide, never mind whether in chloroform it's like eh, that's workable too that's good and then when you go here they become poorer and poorer this one is great as well here the the intermolecular forces between pure uh, non-polar co compounds did you get this because that's the reasoning we're gonna use for solute solvent interactions you go here and kind of reason it on, on its basis. Can you draw diagrams of this kind to show the interactions between the solute and the solvent? All right, so alcohols. Mm. Alcohols meaning there's an OH. Yeah, meaning it's ability to hydrogen bond and whatever it is. So methanol, okay, yeah. Oh, it's what? It's very soluble in water and not so soluble in hexane. It's like, okay. So then, I should look at methanol and say it's more polar than non-polar? If I'm thinking of, should I give it 70% and 30%? I'm just using these numbers for illustrative purposes. Or maybe it's 90 and 10. 
<laughs> I don't know. But you know, so, so when I kind of uh, think of things that way, to s at least for these alcohols. And then, if I may move this up here, when you come to methanol, two carbons, look at what we have. One, two carbons, and OH, it's actually like infinitely soluble, miscible in both water and the non-polar hexane. It's like, ooh, what does that mean? In my head, it means that uh, when we get to two carbons, it's got a non-polar part and a polar hydrogen bonding part. Maybe this is like 50 50. I'm making up numbers here. And so it's soluble in both of them. And then as you go here, as you increase here, you find out that solubility in water decreases. That is, this becomes the non polar part becomes dominating. And, and the OH kind of loses out and the solubility goes down. And of course, uh, solubility in hexane remains infinite or miscible. Take this and think about it and use it. So in our case, we're not going to use alcohols. <laughs> you already have the data here. We're going to take the alcohol and replace it with a COOH, the acid group. And then we're going to compare a number of, uh, not these particular ones, but a number of these, and uh, kind of think of uh, solubility uh, and, and whatever it is. So, uh, uh, so that's one of them. How about if we do this, uh, and this is important, if we take this, uh, we form um, an O minus here. Remember, this is C double bond or O minus, kind of like in acetate and sodium. What's the solubility here? If we take this and uh, we're taking this and dissolving and this and that, what would the data look like? So we're taking the acid, maybe with five carbons and dissolving in water and hexane and looking at the data. And taking the ion, again, with the same number of carbons and dissolving it here and there. And what do you expect the results to be? Again, expect a reason out. Um, do the experiment. Confirm. If it doesn't work, come back. Rethink about what it is that doing. That's the science in you. It's about the process, the scientific reasoning that will make you great. Mm. All right, so methanol is polar with hydrogen, burning ethanol uh, because it dissolves in oil. We say that's where dual natured uh, starts from, and then the dual natured increase is sort of uh, is certainly true for propanol. But as you go very high in the number of carbons, it uh, becomes mostly just soluble in the in the in the in the um, in the hexane. So this is uh, what I was talking about. We could not replace uh, the OH with the acid group, and we could not replace uh, this should be OH OH with the COO minus NA. This should be a small NA, and with that uh, we'll consider increases in uh, the solubility of these in the two solvents. So here are the experiments we're going to look at: water in cyclohexane, acetic acid in cyclohexane, sodium and so sodium chloride in water in cyclohexane, and sodium stearate. This picture came from your from, from your textbook. This is sodium stearate. I chose sodium stearate because it's in your textbook. And then look at that and say steric acid, which is this as an acid group. Can you consider the solubility of water in hexane? Explain what's going on. For capillarity, we're going to look at uh, the, uh, just water in a tube and compare it with other uh, uh, situations. So here's what I came up with. You guys might come up with a better thing. Uh, here's a small beaker. There's a solvent in there. We, I take duct tape. I duct tape these capillary tubes to the side, and uh, the whatever we have here will rise in the tube, and we can measure with a ruler outside there. So in one case, we might have water. In another case, we might have ethanol. Um, uh -huh. In another case, we might have a soap solution, and then compare and contrast those three. Ah, have you ever thought about this? We we we, we observe many of these events in everyday life, and uh, don't really think about it. Uh, so I started with this, with uh, with uh, with uh, the 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 this uh, uh, beaker here with water, and I just folded. Uh, a paper towel here and lo and behold the water rose and transferred the water until the levels were the same it's like yeah you know that you've seen it but why does it happen can you explain it <coughs> can you explain it so we'll have you do that uh, um, 
in the lab today. Again, you go consider capillarity. We give you the structure of uh, uh, what paper looks like on a molecular level, and then with that you can kind of think it through, reason it out, and see what goes. And then, and then I actually saw this on YouTube. So uh, you take a penny, <laughs> one penny, and you you take a, a dropping pipette and you add drops of water here and they'll stay on and lo and behold they form a sort of dome like that uh, and then you count the number of drops and lo and behold sometime it goes <laughs> right so uh, compare water to ethanol How, what are your expectations do you get the same number of drops more drops but what, what's going on so compare that and then take water in the soap solution do the same experiment look at the observations state the observations and explain the observations in a scientifically meaningful way. Um, yeah. And then uh, coming to the end here, I'm going to have you take a burette, put water in there, have this water running sort of right down there and if you bring a charge rod here what happens um is this pushed or pulled or nothing happens it, to the stream that's coming off from the burette if it's water and cyclohexane what, what are the expectations is state what the observations are state what the obs uh, and then be able to explain the observations in a scientifically more meaningful way so that is our lab this week. So in order to do well in this course, remember there is an exam, the two exams. What you want to do is uh, listen to this uh, PPT video that I've given. Go read the manual again. Highlight certain things. Think about it. Study, digest. Maybe watch the video again. You like seeing me? Eh, not exactly. Anyway, so you, you, you got to invest time. This is your, the science. This is your mental development. It's not that you remember this stuff, but that process, that reasoning, that digestion, ability to digest stuff and reason and figure it out. That's the scientist in you. That's your education. So invest the time necessary to master this stuff. It will certainly show up in, a, in an improved grade down the road. Happy Intermolecular Forces Week.